So remember the the ongoing theme on this chapter was discussing different uh, evaluation approaches. So we were thinking that there were many contexts for evaluation. We said there were many different types, moments, and goals for making an evaluation. And that we may decide that each, of the, each combination of the type, moment, and goal, we would should decide we may want to do one kind of evaluation of the other. And we were working on our uh, toolbox of assessment methods. Among these, we distinguished first the importance or the approach of heuristic evaluation. This was the last week before Christmas. And a lot of the stuff that we said about heuristic evaluation was actually related to how it was different from making evaluations with users. How it was more important to do some user testing than doing just regular uh, expert evaluation. We actually did mention that this was considered like the low cost approach. This was the Ryanair of evaluating. Um, we actually started with that instead of the big one of user testing before, because of the logistics of the course. We wanted you to be able to do the heuristic evaluation right after being back from Christmas. But later on, if you're doing a development project, uh, I've been saying throughout the course a lot that we are explaining an ideal process where you have like unlimited resources, unlimited time, and you can do all the stuff from the goal-directed design process without do, taking any shortcuts. But the reality is your regular project will not have the time to do all that stuff. And if there's only one thing from this course that you do in your projects, do user testing. By all means, if you do not have your personas, you have nothing, you, you do not have the time to waste anything on usability, at least do try your application with some users before you release it. Because you'd be surprised at the amount of information that you can retrieve from just having a couple of users play with your application without your help. They are very valuable, so if you can only do one thing, do some user testing. If you can do more stuff, by all means, do more stuff, but at least try to do that. That's why the last part of the, of the course and the last thing that you do on your projects is actually doing some user uh, testing uh, following these principles. And that's the topic for today, how to do a proper user testing. And here again, we are going for an idealized version. We're going to have, assume you have a lot of money and resources to conduct your user test, and you're going to try to Get, get the most out of your users and you have money to spend and so on and so forth. The reality is that you may need to scale this down when you're doing your actual user testing in your actual projects. Uh, so what's the deal? What's the basic, basic, basic idea? What you want to do on a user test is you want to grab a user from the street, not a developer from your team, not a developer from across the door, but something who is representative of your regular user base, and you want to sit him down in front of your system and let him play or use your system while you are watching and seeing whether the user is able to navigate the system to understand everything that is there. And you are there watching silently without helping the user, because in the real world you will not be there whispering in the user's ear, and you try to figure out if this is working or it's not working, and you are furiously taking notes. That's the very basic idea. As we will see, we can make this very complex, and we will see some very complex examples during the class, but that's the basic idea. Have the user sit down in a controlled environment while you watch him or her uh, interacting with your system. And again, how do you prepare a user test? Uh, list of steps. Did you miss this? List of steps that contain lists of steps. So much fun. Um, we are going to be going in detail. That's actually the roadmap for today's class. And uh, I'm going to start by describing how to prepare an evaluation plan. But I'm going to be very brief in this first section because your evaluation plan is where you make decisions of how you are going to do each of the following stages. So I will give brief summary here. <coughs> Sorry, and then we will go in detail on the other eight stages of all the ideas and alternatives that you have. Again, here we are building toolboxes. Then when you're going to do your actual user testing, there will be some customization going on. But the first thing is do have a document that is your evaluation plan. 
Uh, there's actually, I will insist on this a bit later, there's actually a sample evaluation plan on the virtual campus. Unfortunately, it's in, <coughs> it's in Spanish, it's gathered from a previous project, uh, but if you do need some help with that, uh, I will help you out. Anyway, those of you really not speaking any Spanish are in teams with people that do speak Spanish, they can also give a hand, so we should be fine. Um, so what, what do you write on an evaluation plan? Everything. You write everything that you're planning to do. But you also sit down and really start by pondering what are your real goals and your real purposes for your uh, investigation. Because there's one thing about user testing, it's, it's dramatically expensive. Not in terms of money necessarily, but in terms of time management and the work that is involved. So you want to make the most out of it. So you need to sit down and try to cover all the big questions. You typically begin by identifying the purpose and goals of your evaluation, meaning why am I evaluating? Because the teacher said that my project required an evaluation. Okay, yes, but that's a bit of a shitty goal. We want to have something more powerful. Um, you need to figure out why are you evaluating whenever it's not me forcing you. And what exactly you want to evaluate, that's your objective or your goal. Uh, in terms of motivations, what could possibly prompt I user testing. Well, typically, if you have an important iteration on, on your design process, you just finished the design framework and you have a prototype. This is a good moment to make uh, some user testing. Or you have a final interface. You have your final prototype, you're ready, and you think it's ready. Or the development is over, this is a functional product you are about to launch and you want to, know, to do a final check with actual users. Or there is a virtual line right here you have already deployed your application, this is working, but you're receiving complaints. Or maybe you are detecting unfinished processes. Maybe you created Amazon and you say and you notice that you are your system is full of half finished uh, purchase processes. Why are users failing to complete their, their processes, what their purchases, what's going on? And you want to figure that out. So you may want to do this may all be triggers for doing some user testing. And depending on your specific trigger, this will influence some of your decisions later on. And the general goal for your evaluation uh, will typically be a somewhat open-ended type of thing. And you have like one overarching uh, goal. These are a couple of examples. We want to find possible deficiencies on the interface, or we want to verify that the interface adapts to the expectations of the users. Sorry guys, you're distracting me enormously. Thanks. Even if it's important, it's very distracting. And we will go from this higher level open-ended research goals to more specific research questions. While the goals can be very open and varied, your research questions should be more specific. You typically want to have five to 10 research questions. I think I have a slide on that in a couple of minutes. And you want to be very specific and do things that you can actually measure because asking us a research question, is the interface usable? Uh, it's a bit of a bad research question. Some better research question, do users know what elements are actionable? Is it easy to complete the registration process? These are more specific research questions. There are a lot of examples here and on the materials. I'm not going to read them for you. Uh, if you were doing a mobile app, your research questions may be a little bit different. They may be related to navigation across the activities, to touching the right places, to the size of the buttons, things like that. And in a larger business application, you will also have some research questions more related to your domain, to your application flows, to the knowledge required by the users, or whether the application is aligned with the expectations and language of the users. You will be paying attention to this. And as I said, you typically want to start by formulating five to 10 of these. These are going to be the highlights of your evaluation. And these are going to be the things that you really want your users to touch base on. And then you will also want to, on your research plan, you will also want to have some notions about who are going to be your users, how you're going to recruit your users. There will be more on this later, but there are two big uh, ideas. If you're following the goal-directed design process, you are in the development process, you already have a blueprint for your users. They are your personas, remember? These are the archetypes of your users. So you want to find actual people on the street that resemble your personas. And if this is not the case, you've not been doing goal-directed design, you just have a demographic audience, then you want to pick users that are representative of your demographic. If you're doing an application for grandpas, do not 
approach on the street 16 year olds. It's not going to make any sense. I mean, it's obvious, common sense. And more stuff for your uh, plan. There is a big section on any research plan, on any evaluation plan, which is the experimental design. So I know who are, what's my research, which are my research questions. I know what type of users I'm going to have. Then how am I going to run my experiment? When you're doing a user testing, more than when you're doing heuristic evaluation, you are going into like the pure science area. You are starting to be designing an experiment like it's much more researchy, if I may. And so you want to follow through with typical design patterns for research. So on your experimental design, you will start by saying, okay, so my experiment, I'm going to grab these users and I'm going to ask them to do this sequence of tasks. And this task will be covering, well, all my key path scenarios if I'm going goal-directed design and everything that we said about task fragmenting for heuristic evaluation also applies here. If my system is small, I will want all my users to try everything. If my system is larger, I will make partitions. And I will make partitions and I will say, as we said on the heuristic evaluation, I will try to alternate the partitions across the evaluators. I will try to change the order whenever I can. I will try to have as much permutations and coverage as I can. But this is the same thing. We did the exercise of distributing the evaluators already. So I'm not going to go through the entire thing again. And when you create the list, here you have two options when you're working with users. One is to go as you would with the, with the expert evaluators. With the expert evaluators, we said, you just have a list of tasks. You have to do this and this and this and this and that. And you have phrases such as this, find a recipe with pork on this website. And you try to figure out if the user can do it or not. But also, if you're following the goal-directed uh, design, you do have your scenarios and you can propose the task, you can do the script on the scenario style. Like you just propose the first couple of sentences of your scenarios uh, that, <coughs> that you had already planned and they always start with a short phrase set in the context and what's the goal of the user. Well, just give that to the user. Say, okay, so this weekend you have the graduation dinner and you need to find a suit for the event at the El Corte Inglés website. And you just drop them and see if they can manage it and you analyze them managing. So both could work depending on your project. In your cases, since you do have your persona, you do have your scenarios and you're going to be looking for users that match your personas, just go ahead with the scenarios in your projects. It's the easier way. Just propose the scenario and see if the users are able to complete the entire thing. None of the two applications is so large so as to, be, uh, to require a large partitioning or anything like that. So, Go straight to the point. On your experimental design, you should also be mentioning a lot of stuff that we will be giving a lot of options later on, like where will you do the sessions, who will be there, uh, what physical means you will have. You will have a camera, a, a laptop, uh, what kind of setting, uh, what tools will you be using, what's installed on the laptop, or how you're going to process your software. The idea is write all that stuff down. Some ideas on those in a few minutes. And this could be like the description of the environment. Okay, this could be a description of the environment. This could perfectly be in your research plan. I will give you more options on how to fill this section later on when we are going through the next steps. I'm actually going to leave that there for 30 seconds so you can read it through. Okay, so important things to notice. I'm speaking of where, I'm speaking of the computers and the materials that I have. I'm thinking about how I'm going to capture the, <coughs> the interactions. I'm going to have some screen capture software. I'm going to have a video camera that's written somewhere. Uh, and I will also have an audio recorder to have a redundant log of whatever happens uh, here because recording these sessions is very, very, very important. Uh, again, some ideas on how to arrange these later on. Also in your experimental design, it's important to agree on what's going to be the scope of the moderator. There will be someone there with the user, and as I said, the basic idea is the moderator does never help the user. We will be giving some subtleties to that never. It's not that clear cut. Uh, but you should write that down, and you should have like clear rules of how 
far will the moderator reach in terms of interacting with the, with the user. And this may depend. This may depend on your project and your context, and you have to decide it. You should also figure out which data you, you are going to be collecting. You should write that down from the very beginning, whether you're going to do uh, analysis of percentage of errors or frequency of errors, actions, inactions. There are a lot of things that you could be wanting to measure. And since you already have your five to 10 research questions, this will actually be kind of directly derived from these, those research questions. So what do I need to look at to give answers to my research questions? So again, a lot of common sense is involved here. And also, and this is more challenging to do, especially the first times, uh, some ideas of how you're going to go from your raw data to your actual actionable data. Because one thing is saying, OK, I'm going to record all users. But then a video recording is a very raw type of material. We discussed this when we were doing like the initial research. This is the same thing. How am I going to turn those raw materials to documents with lists of specific changes that I can create? So you should already have an idea here and write down how you're going to do your research. I'm actually going to want to take a look at these documents with all these descriptions before you do your user testing on the coming weeks. So try to push for that as soon as possible so I can help you out.